Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. This is episode 109, and I am your host, Jen Liddy. All month, I have been talking about visibility and strategies to help you get more visible, both tactical and mindset-wise. And today, I'm bringing you a coach, Leah Bonvisuto. She is a conversational confidence coach. She is an expert who helps people be seen, be heard, and step into their voices. The conversation with Leah is amazing because she not only gives you tools that you can apply to help you feel great about being more visible in your world, in your life, in your job, and in your business, but she also really helps with strategies to reduce visibility exhaustion. Because throughout our conversation together, we talk a lot about how exhausted, depleted, and overwhelmed we all are by just what's going on with COVID-19 and how much we have to look at ourselves and then look at each other over Zoom. So I really want you to enjoy this conversation I had with Leah and take away the absolute gems that she was so generous in sharing with us. Enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. Hi, everyone. I wonder if by being on camera all the time in meetings or presentations, if you're feeling a little bit of personal communication fatigue, uh, if you're feeling like you can't quite connect, if you're feeling physically exhausted from doing this, I imagine that you are feeling some of that because everybody I talk to right now is on Zoom meetings all day long or FaceTiming. And today I have communication coach Leah Benevisuto, who is the founder of Present Voices, and she's got some really amazing tools that I know you can apply right away. So Leah, thank you so much. But did I say your last name correctly? It's Bon Vesuto, but it's a long one. It's a long one. Thanks for having me, Jen. <laughs> So what is it that you teach your clients that we can benefit from right now? I help people have more conversational confidence and speak off the cuff in important moments. That's always been my focus, but right now it has never been more important. I have a particular focus on video communication. I always have. It's a tricky mode of communication, but it actually can be a really amazing tool for those of us who consider ourselves soft-spoken or analytical because there are an element of technical control on video that's not available in person. So this is a moment full of, of course, communication challenges, but also quite a few surprises that I've been hearing from my clients. Like what? What are some of the things that people are saying? It's pretty remarkable that some of my longtime clients who are now presenting on Zoom all day, every day, are finding more conversational confidence in their presentations because they're able to really select what the audience is seeing. For example, I have a client who has always practiced with a stress ball because it helps her channel all of her fidgeting and her extraneous energy into one place in her body. But she's always had to leave the stress ball at home for the actual (laughs) presentations. She's been getting rave reviews from her supervisors throughout this time because of the way that she's able to show up on Zoom. She's able to prepare in in a very different, specific way. And I have other clients, I work with a lot of people who call themselves introverts or soft-spoken or analytical. And this is really a space where you can feel more in control when you're presenting, as long as you know how to maximize the media. Well, I I, I get the sense that that's what you're going to tell us today is how to maximize. And I I have so many questions for you, but I will wait till the end until I, let's just, let me hear your brilliance. So the biggest thing I'm recommending right now is that people lean back if they have a tendency to lean in. Yeah. Like instead of like this, which I do all the time. (laughs) 
Okay. This is actually something I recommend in person with all my clients. It's been one of my favorite tools for years. I joke that Sheryl Sandberg told us to lean in and then we're all making ourselves small and seeking validation and wanting to show that we're engaged and show that we are present. But that showing is actually taking us away from being present because we're more concerned with how other people are perceiving us than actually being present ourselves. So in person, I almost always recommend that people lean back because if you think of people who exude that confidence that most of us are seeking, they're very rarely leaning in. And leaning back also helps you be expansive. It helps you take up more space, which improves your hormonal confidence as, as Amy Cuddy has taught us so well. And it also means that you're less constricted in your ability to breathe, which helps you think on your feet. And particularly with video communication, we are all seeking validation right now. It's coming with this very challenging moment, but also if everyone you're speaking to is on mute or some people don't have their videos on, there are nonverbal cues that are severely disrupted in this moment. And 93% of communication is nonverbal, is everything but the words. 93 93%, 93% is tone of voice, body language, facial expression, eye contact. Mm-hmm. And those things are present on video, but they are obscured. And so if we're missing some of that nonverbal feedback, we are likely to fill the gap ourselves. And that takes a lot of mental energy. That's why we are becoming exhausted. Well, this is so fascinating. Yes. So leaning back counters this tendency to lean in. And it also can create some more space for you to have feel a feeling of expansiveness to be able to think. Mm. And it's quite a remarkable tool. If you're someone who tends to lean in, that is my recommendation. If you're someone who tends to lean back and you have a lot of power and privilege, you might consider going the other way, especially when you are hosting a conversation, because leaning in a little can show that you are putting yourself on the spot, you're bringing yourself to others. But leaning back is how you really access that confidence. So this is even for speakers, even if I was like, Uh, facilitating a Zoom conference right now, you're saying the speaker can lean back and exude confidence. Well, conversations are a two-part, right? And so I always feel it's so interesting to think about how much work am I doing in the conversation? And that's a question of your role in the conversation and your matter of privilege. So when I'm hosting on Zoom, I actually do modulate a bit and come forward a bit. I will often put a small pillow behind my back so that I can still feel that expansiveness, that lack of tension by leaning back. But I'm making myself a bit more available. My focus is on helping the audience be more comfortable in those moments. As opposed to if I was in a team meeting and presenting to my supervisor where I really want to harness that confidence, then I would lean back a bit more. And it has the effect of pulling people to you Uh, instead of feeling like you have to go to them. That reminds me when I was a high school teacher, I I had this move with my ninth graders where I would get real quiet. Like in my most pissed off, get real quiet with them. And then they would freak out. And then they would, like, the quieter I got, the quieter they got. So it draws really? in. I love the, the physical way to do this is by leaning back. Another component of that, what you just said, is that people are having a lot of vocal exhaustion on Zoom right now. <laughs> Because we are sending our voices through to the other side of someone who feels so far away or we're trying to connect so desperately. And video communication actually has the effect of amplifying your voice. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my clients who are historically soft-spoken are finding new ways of feeling amplified right now. It's been so thrilling to watch. But for most people on Zoom, I'm recommending that you pull back to about 75% of your normal volume. It has that effect of bringing people to you. And that in itself can help you feel more confident because you're doing a less what I call going to get 
at your people and instead you're letting them come to you. Letting them to you. This is brilliant stuff. And also I tend to have, I tend to be really forward because I'm usually typing while somebody's talking. And also I have a strident voice to begin with. So this will be a practice for me. This is not something that will be perfect right away. The way that I see this work is that it's always a practice. And actually, I advise people to only integrate this stuff 5% of the time. Because if you try to integrate it all the time, you will exhaust yourself in any day, but especially right now. And we have to focus on preserving our energy. So all of my tips are about how you can preserve energy and do less work in your communication, not more, but also so that you can really feel a sense of proactivity and control in small, tiny moments and set yourself up to feel successful. This is so helpful and so wonderful. Now, I know that you have one more tip for us, which I'm really excited to talk about. And so let's move into that. What's the next thing we need to know? This has been something that has been fueling me for the past few weeks. And when I'm in person with people and I do my group workshops with teams, I almost always do my favorite exercise, which is a staring contest. (laughs) But instead of the staring contest we grew up with, blinking is allowed and laughing is actually encouraged. You don't want to be clamping down and holding back. But by letting your physical attention rest in someone else's eyes. It not only helps you get good feelings of oxytocin and phenylethamine, which is a hormone that mimics being in love for both partners, but you also give your attention some place to settle so that your mind and your words can become aligned and you can speak like you are in one place instead of what a lot of us are feeling right now, which is like our brains are split in 50 places and splintered. And so even for a moment, finding that physical resettling of energy can help align your communication so that you can be more focused and present. But on video, of course, people don't know where to look. And that in itself can become a distraction. If you are thinking about where should I be looking while you're speaking, then you are splintering your attention. Right. And so I have lots of thoughts on where people can look. And if you're recording to be played back later and you really need to maintain that connection with your audience on social media, for example, I do recommend looking right in the camera. That can be quite effective. But throughout our call today, Jen, I have made the choice to instead look in your eyes. Right. And even though you don't know that I'm looking in your eyes, I am looking in your eyes. So I'm getting that oxytocin. I'm getting that connection. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that hormonal shift that we are all desperately seeking right now. And yesterday I did a live webinar on conversational communication and there were 50 people in the Zoom room and lots of people, you know, were perhaps not present all of the time, as can be expected right now. We have to be forgiving of that right now and do our best not to take it personally because this is a moment of extreme desperation and freneticism for a lot of people. But I found the people on the screen who were either close to me or I knew who made me feel comfortable. And I just let my eyes rest on them the entire time. And no one knew where I was looking Those people didn't know where I was looking. And it has the effect of settling your physical attention so that it seems like you are grounded. And that is an amazing impact. I can imagine. So you and I are looking at each other's faces right now. We're on video. I'm looking in your eyes. You're looking at mine. I've actually hidden my face off to the side so that I can only look at you and not be distracted by myself. Um, But if we were in real life, I could not maintain this level of eye contact with you because that would be weird, right? So we would, like at some point, one of us would be looking off to the side as we talked, but really like we can just maintain eye contact in a way that we actually can't do in real life. So that's an interesting thing I've never thought about before. It is really interesting and it's a way for us to preserve energy and get some of that good feeling going during our very, very tiring days. And in person, one of the most common questions I get asked is why can't I maintain eye contact when I'm thinking? Just like you just said. And the same part of our brain that controls eye contact controls deep thinking. Okay. 
So there's a really good reason why we have to look away. And in person or on video, I advise people to use that as a signal for your audience when you have to think. Yes, turning away to and look. Then right. Consciously re engage. And we are so <laughs> hesitant to show that we are thinking. And we're, people are smart. We need to think. <laughs> and, and doing so proactively is a good thing. And so helping people break down that process for themselves creates a bit more time and space for people to think more on their own pace and speak at a rate that feels right for them. This is so helpful. There's one last thing I want to ask you about. Um, if anybody is just listening to this, they won't, they won't see you, obviously. But on the video call, Leah has a beautiful chair that's a, a dark red wine color. Uh, it's, it's, it goes beyond her. It kind of is beyond her shoulders. And then there's just a beige background. And there's nothing for me to look at except these very soothing colors. My background is very busy. I have a bookshelf back there and I have a, a, a gallery wall. And so I've always enjoyed my background, but it's quite soothing to look at you right now. Is that something oh. that's by design you've done that? I have to tell you, nothing is by design right now. <laughs> we're in a we're in a temporary ish space, okay. so we don't have anything on the walls except you might see my daughter's drawings oh, are just yeah. off to the side, which I keep there because they keep me very happy. But up until a few days ago, I did have a folding chair in this tiny corner of my bedroom that doesn't have room for anything else. Uh -huh. And I was propping myself up on pillows so that I could lean back. <laughs> and finally, I said, you know, I need to feel more powerful right now. And this chair is just not cutting it. And one of my biggest recommendations for folks in this time and in normal times is to sit in a chair that makes you feel powerful. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't taking that advice myself. And this chair is my joy. It just feels so good. It looks like it feels good. <laughs> so I brought this in here just yesterday and it has arms so I can feel expansive. It's really holding me up. It helps me lean back. But I will say I have a lot of tools that can make your space feel better, look better. We really are looking at ourselves so much right now that the better we can feel, it's, it can be helpful. I use a filter on Zoom that I don't even know if it's on right now. I'm curious. It's not on. Let's turn it on. It's called eyeglasses. And it creates a bit of a filter, which can be helpful sometimes. Can you see a difference? A little bit of a difference in the lighting too. And okay. the yeah. further away, yeah. Yeah. And so there's lots of great tools out there. And I imagine in this moment, there's going to be organizations creating even more. So basically, do what you can do to feel as powerful, as calm, as confident, and reserve your energy. And you're going to have to experiment with what that is with you. There's not one right way, and you can't expect 100% from yourself on this, on this realm. Oh, yeah. It's all a practice. And that's really the way that this works anyway, is people need to take this into their own realm and make it their, their own. I, I stand as an outside eye. So in this realm, we don't usually have people we can talk to about this kind of stuff, about our tone of voice and how we're perceived. It can be helpful to get out of your own head and have an outside eye and someone to bounce those ideas off of. But at the end of the day, there is no perfection. There is only presence. And presence means something different right now than it did before. I'm trying to maintain presence in the moment for the moment and then moving on. And in the next moment, I probably won't be present, but then maybe in the next one, I can practice that again. Perfection is not going to help anyone right now. It never does. And this is a moment particularly where we, we are being forced to release a bit of that expectation. I love this whole conversation. Thank you so much. How can people get into your orbit and benefit from following you or even working with you if people are really ready to do this kind of work with them for themselves? Yes. 
please follow me at presentvoices.co on Instagram. We are talking about talking there. This is a space where I want people's voices to be heard. And on Instagram, you can find all about my free workshops that I'm doing on conversational communication. You can visit my website, presentvoices.co. I have individual coaching programs. I'm also launching a group coaching program where each month I'll be gathering eight people in small group settings to work on this stuff together. It's my favorite way to work on this is in a small group because the real power of this work is not about me. It's about other people knowing that they're not alone and having people they can talk about this with. It's very and then there having practical, tangible tools to put into practice each week. I am so excited about this program. That's exciting. So when does that launch? The first cohort is starting next Tuesday and that I cannot wait for. We have such a wonderful group of people from all kinds of different industries and countries joining. So I'm oh, really wow. excited wonderful. to hear their voices and bring them together. Oh, that's wonderful. Leah, thank you so much for your time and expertise. You were so generous with us today. I, I can't express to you how helpful and easily implementable these are. I'm, I can't wait to go follow you on Instagram and, and learn from you on a continuous basis. I'm so glad, Jen. Thank you so much. Did Leah not give so much great stuff in that conversation? I walked away from talking with her feeling so much more empowered about how to be seen and heard and how to do it in a way that doesn't deplete me. I hope you can take away at least one thing from that conversation and and implement it right away. If you are struggling with visibility in your life, in your business, go to my website and download the seven strategies to increase visibility because visibility equals more customers, more clients, and business growth. And if you're tired of feeling invisible, if you're tired of getting nowhere with your content marketing, and you feel like you are not being seen in the noise online today, go to jenliddy.com forward slash visibility. And there is a free downloadable You'll also get coaching emails that take you through how to actually do this. Definitely go check that out. I would love to hear how you're doing because you can also use the hashtag time to be visible and I will be able to see you online and cheer you on from the sidelines. I hope that this was really helpful for you today. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.